Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Springfield in the Enos Park neighborhood. It's really nice to hear a story about these times in the bad economy when local government resources are very dear and library branches are closing up. Well, here, the Third Presbyterian Church saw a need, had a space, and a community group took advantage of that opportunity to create a community library. And this, as I mentioned, at a time when libraries all over the country are trimming back or closing down. Well, Rachel coaches, here it is the middle of the summer, mm -hmm. and the kids in the Enos Park area and the area around here now have some place to go and spend some constructive time. Yes. That's nice, isn't it? Yes, it's really nice. A community library mm -hmm. with no government help just mm -hmm. springs up a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. They find you mm -hmm. uh, as a librarian in Riverton mm -hmm. to run it. How's it going? Uh, we are doing great right now. We, um, we have a lot of children who are coming here every day when our doors are open. We average about 30 kids um, mm -hmm. a day and we couldn't be happier. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it, we're going to, as we go through this program, we're going to talk to some of your board members and mm -hmm. those who were here at the beginning to try to get it set up. But first, if you would, Take us through this place. It's a lovely mm -hmm. facility. We're on the ground level right. of the Third Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. Well, right over here, we've got our computer uh, technology center. All the kids right now are playing either a computer game or an iPad game. During the school year, we have uh, um, research and uh, projects being done for school. Mm -hmm. Um, each kid gets a 20-minute turn uh -huh. um, on the computer or iPad, and they get two turns for that while they're here during the during the mm -hmm. their time. And, and some of the kids don't have computers or pads at home, so they learn how to operate them here, and they get exposed to stuff they might not get exposed to, huh? Sure. <laughs> and over here, what do we got over here? <laughs> well, you got toys we got over some, here. Is what you got? A bunch of toys. These are the some of our puppets right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Puppet shows are very fun and popular uh, activities that we do here. <laughs> Mr. Lettuce. <laughs> Mr. Well, it Turtle. takes an imagination to bring a puppet show together. Uh huh. Yeah. A lot of times we'll use a book. We'll read a book at the same time, and we'll make our puppets act out the books that that's, we're reading. That's a great thing while to we're do. Here. So that they can take a book home with them, and then they can figure out how to make a puppet show puppet out of show it. Out there of you that. go. We've done that quite a few times. And anything that encourages reading—that's that's what the <laughs> library is about, isn't it? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> of course, your old kitchen toys here. Yeah. And yeah. I, I um, guess this—it looks like an area where kids would come in here and just just have fun playing. And yeah. you got a rack of games for them. Too. Oh yeah, we have a lot of a lot of games. We play Sorry, Monopoly all mm -hmm. the time. Um, We've uh, we've had quite a few kids learn how to play chess while they've been coming here. No kidding. So we play chess wow. and checkers and Yahtzee, games uh -huh, like that. Uh -huh. um, these blocks are very popular over on this side as well. Right over here? Uh-huh. They like to... A lot of times what they'll do is build a stage out of the blocks for their puppet show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, set it up for the puppet show. Okay. Where you hide, I'll go get the puppet. Hide the puppeteer, huh? <laughs> We've got a chalkboard. We've got a blackboard over there. We, we do a lot of uh, spelling work on the chalkboard during uh -huh. the school year. Kids will practice their spelling words. Um, table for games. For, for little, yeah, for little ones. Yeah. Uh, another another table here. for games over uh -huh. here. More books. How many books do you have in this library? Um, we have about 15,000 books right now. Um, the community has been very, very generous in their um, donation of books. You know, kids. Uh, kids grow out of books. They, they, they mm -hmm. advance at a pretty rapid pace when they're learning to read. So um, they, we often will get, get books donated yeah. um, when kids grow out of well, them. Well, you can't get too many <laughs> books donated. In fact, if you look, you've got a pretty good collection here. Yeah, you can you kind of over there. see. No shortage. No, what you might think is a shortage of books. To me, it would take me a lifetime to read that. But, uh -huh. but uh, you, got, you really do have, have had very generous people, haven't yes. you? 
Yes. And you have a clothes table over here. I guess yeah. some of the kids bring bring in used things or not too used things, and others that need them can take them home. Yeah. Huh? Um, well, I go to a consignment shop every week, and the materials that they don't, and the clothes that they don't want to use mm -hmm. um, for for their store, I go and I get the the donations, and I bring them here. We put them out on the table every week. The kids can pick and choose, kind yeah. of shop for themselves if they want some some clothes. Yeah. And then anything that doesn't get used here, we uh, pass it on to other yeah. charities. Yeah. Well, how nice is that? Well, like I said, as we go through this program, we're going to get to visit with one of your one of your students here, who's uh -huh. uh, who's in a reading is in a reading program as most of your kids are uh -huh. and you can describe that to us we'll find out what how this uh, library got started and what makes it tick and uh, we'll just get a look at what the kids are up to and we, we appreciate your time thanks thank you very much okay. well Bonnie Douglas in this day and age library branches are all closing down that's right but there's not there's not an expansion of libraries no. which makes it really interesting that on the north side, the North Side Community Children's Library came into existence at all. I That's mean, right. because this is a, this is a time when, like I say, branches just closed down. That's right, and and we're very fortunate that this one started and is growing. Um, we know that more than five years ago, the North Side branch closed. All the branches in Springfield yeah. closed, and so we saw this as an opportunity to create a library and welcome people in the neighborhood to just get to know one another and be able to provide for children things that they might not otherwise have access to, mm -hmm. technology and, and a lot of books. So this has been mm -hmm. a great project, it really has. Well, it's interesting because here you are, you know, you're, you're, you're in the third Presbyterian church mm -hmm. and, and you're in the basement level, yes. the, the lower level. Right. Um, a, an organization that had a terrible fire 10 years ago. But this part of it was untouched. Correct. And they had Correct. some, I guess they had preschool going on down they here, did. which they discontinued. And here's this gorgeous space. Nice. And, and and they said, well, you know what? It might work for a library. That's exactly right. We had a, kind of a little brainstorming session. We were having a potluck dinner and talking about ways that we could reach out to the community. And one of the, the people said, you know, we could start a library. And we thought about the space that we had, and we said, yeah, we've got the mm -hmm. space that was used for preschool. It was um, also being used for Sunday school classes, but we've since moved the classes to other parts of the building mm -hmm. so that we could repurpose this space, and it's worked out so well. It really so, has. So you were, uh, you're a member of the congregation I am. of the Third Presbyterian Church, yes. and at the time you were also then on the board of directors of the library. I was. So you were sort of able to, to meet that the needs from, from both sides. Right, to see where the... Um, where the needs were in this library and they began to be filled so quickly. The community kind of rallied around this idea. When mm -hmm. we tossed out the idea at that potluck dinner, within six months we put together a small committee and we invited people from the community. So we had neighborhood associations and just members at large from the community come and be part of this and pretty soon we had the space and then people from the community began to donate things. We had lots of books. Pretty much all the books in this library have been donated mm -hmm. and games and, and toys and puzzles and shelving and things that we needed started to come together. Mm -hmm. So in the fall of 2011, we wrote a grant and received funding and that really helped us get get started. It put together, uh, we were able to purchase the technology that we needed and, and start to get things in place and we, and we hired staff. We have a, a librarian and we have a janitorial uh, staff so it's worked out so well. Yeah, it really it, it's, it's, it's remarkable. I, I guess that you also have, must have gotten some help from the Enos, Enos Park Association and some other groups because th this is something that the neighborhood has to want. Yes, Enos Park Neighborhood Association, Oak Ridge Neighborhood Association, and Lincoln Park Neighborhood Association mm -hmm. all um, provided some donations in some form or another. Either they donated uh, funding to buy books or rugs or um, mm -hmm. things like that and, and have continued to be interested in the project. They make it a regular part of their meetings to talk about what's going on with the library mm -hmm. and uh, are there any events happening. And, and so the students that from nearby schools had heard about it but now lots of children in the neighborhood have come. Yeah. Well so. their kids are the beneficiary of this. That's thing, right. you know I mean because the kids true. the kids ride their bikes here, they walk here. Most of these yeah. kids they're not their parents aren't driving them here. Most of them come on their own, don't they? That's right. And and another thing, the, the bike rack, we, we had a bike rack put in by mm -hmm. a neighborhood association that that said um, look this is Terrific. a need. We have kids riding their bikes and where are they going to park these? So so 
it it came to be. So this is okay. So great. now that gives us up to where where you are. Okay, so you've got a facility and you've got books and you've got shelves, right. etc. But this thing has to keep living and growing That's because you you can never stop, can you? That's right. I mean, this is this has become a very important part of the community. And in many ways, this is so much more than a library. It's become a community center, and uh, the needs of children and families are being met beyond library books being mm -hmm. checked out. Um, there are a lot of things that um, wouldn't have otherwise happened and connections that have been made with, with adults in the community that have really helped uh, children and families. So we want this to continue. I'm part of a, uh, a small committee that works on resource development to continue seeking grant funds but also seeking community donations and mm -hmm. we truly need those. Um, we are now going into the almost the third year of existence and we need funding mm -hmm. so that's uh, one of the things that we want to reach out to the community and we invite anyone in the community to be involved either donate some time as a volunteer or help become part of seeking funds or donate some mm -hmm. funds so that we can keep this going and how are you doing on your fundraising well we we have uh, we received funding initially from it's a, a church organization it's called the Presbytery and they provide regional grant funding they got us started and we were able to come back to them a couple more times. Mm -hmm. Now we're also reaching out to community um, organizations. We haven't yet been fortunate to receive a, uh, a grant in the Springfield community, but we're continuing mm -hmm. to look. And then of course, uh, further to state and national organizations. Right. So right. We, we are fortunate there's a group that is called the Community Mission Network and they are now starting to sit down and talk with us about how we can strategize, how we can keep funding going for this mm -hmm. for years to come. Yeah. And that's a planning meeting we've got coming up on Sunday as a matter of fact. So. Thank you very much for the visit. Well, you're welcome. Thanks, Mark. Rachel, I remember when I was a kid that librarians always had tricks <laughs> to get them to read. Right? Right. And, and Anthony here has read some of the books that, that you suggested he read. And one of the tricks is a computer program. Right. What are you going to do? Well, right now we're going to be uh, plugging in the books that he read to the Springfield um, District 186 website. Mm -hmm. They've got a program this summer called Read Five and Beyond. Um, and Anthony's read far beyond five books is that this right? summer. So he's been a good reader. <laughs> he's huh? an excellent yeah. reader. So when you so so what's the object of, of putting it into a, pr a computer program? Well, um, every book that he plugs in, um, he'll plug in the minutes for the book, and hmm. we'll plug in one of the books he read here. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, oops. What's, what's that we, first book? We're going to go to add minutes. Okay. Oh, it's how many minutes he read? Mm -hmm. huh? Okay. And he's read quite a few books. We're going to type in the little, oh shoot, the little and the trash. The little what? Times. The Times. Times. T I N. T I N E S. Yeah. Okay. All <laughs> and right. he's read that for. Five minutes? No, 22 and another five minutes. So. Oh, 27 minutes, 27 huh? 27 minutes. Wow. All right. You must like that one. Yeah. <laughs> so he's read that book for 27 mm -hmm. minutes, and I'll save it. Okay. And so far, it tells him he's read 72 minutes this week, uh -huh. 494 minutes this month, and wow. he's read a total of 561 minutes over the well, summer. Well, that's, that's pretty so neat. So, mm -hmm. and so then, is, he, is he in a competition of some kind? He is in a competition. He's in a competition um, with, we'll go to his school here, McLernan Elementary. Mm -hmm. And, all right, right now Anthony is in second or third place. <laughs> <laughs> Good he's work, excited buddy. because he's he's in competition with a lot of his friends right now. Uh -huh. You know all those you know all those guys and girls on there, huh? Yeah. And you're in third. Okay. He's in third we got to knock Zone Seth. To third. We got to knock Seth off, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, we can actually see how many books he's read the entire summer. It's been a good summer for that, huh? We can look at his full reading log. And he's read all of these books oh, over the summer. It's about and the summer's just started. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's it's like it's like thirty books. Probably more. Probably more. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. Yep. 
Well, that's great. And so, and so you have uh, you have Rachel log that in for you every time you get what a half hour behind you or something like that. No, oh, fifteen minutes. Fifteen, 15 minutes. minutes. Okay. And then, and then, what do you do? And now he's. And then we have like um, wallets, and then on Saturdays we get to spend them. Okay, he so gets you've got five book, book bucks. Book bucks. Huh? Okay, all right. And this is for every fifteen minutes of reading. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right, so you get two. Yep. You get two five dollars yeah. worth of book bucks. Anthony, write his name on the back of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. We've got a wallet that he's made for himself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and that's where the book bucks. And go? that's where he stores his All book right. bucks until usually, Saturday. Usually, how many book bucks do you get before you before you cash them in? Have you done that yet? Have you cashed him in yet? Oh, he's cashed. Oh, yeah. Him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's gotten a whoopee cushion. That Danny broke. <laughs> <laughs> Can't trust that boy. He's gotten some tape measures and some wallets. I don't need the tape measure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. hey, Anthony, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, Rachel. Yep. Anthony, being in third place in that reading competition, that's pretty impressive. You proud? <laughs> kind of, huh? But it's not first. You want to be in first. No. Yeah, you want to be in first. You're, you're going to be a third grader? When did you start reading? Um, probably in June. Rachel probably knows. Like a year ago, maybe? Mm -mm, Two no. years ago? When she started the um, reading, when they started the reading program, that was a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, so, so like that's you got a lot of time in the summer, don't you? When you're not in school to do that, is that one of your favorite things to do? What read? Mm -hmm. Read and play, math. Math too, huh? So you do you do your homework, don't you? Yeah. Do you get good grades? I bet you do. You seem like you're a real serious student. What What have you been reading? Like a lot of chapter books, mostly. What kind of books? Chapter books. Chapter books. What's a chapter book? Chapter book, it's a book that has a chapters and you read them. And they're like long books. Do you have favorite like characters, book characters? Who are they? In Junie B. Jones, it's Junie B. Junie B. And the Littles, it's the dad, and <laughs> you can't remember right now. Huh? Looking at the series. Oh, you're trying. <laughs> you're trying to envision it, huh? Oh, maybe it'll come to you. Oh, Magic Treehouse. Magic Treehouse. Jack. Jack, and and that's the character in the Magic Treehouse that you like, huh? Okay. Um, if this library wasn't here. What would you be doing during the summer? Mostly at the park. At the park, doing what? Playing monkey bars, playing with my friends. Mm -hmm. You still have time to do that, though, don't you? Yeah. yeah. You say you'd spend part of your time inside and part of your time outside. Yep. And then on Thursdays during the summer, they have a special kind of a special event at night here, don't they? What goes on? Um, we have a prayer, then we get in line, and then we go get food, and then we get the drinks at the other table, and then when we're done, we throw our, we show the plates to the person that's uh -huh. doing the cookies, <laughs> and then if it's empty, we... If you ate your, if you ate what you're supposed to, your dinner, then you get your cookies, right? Yeah. Okay, and what's for dinner tonight, do you know? Look, just lasagna and some other stuff that I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> lasagna, other stuff, and cookies, right? Okay, so if you finish the lasagna and cookies the other stuff. Cookies or cake. Or cake, okay. If you, if you finish the lasagna and the other stuff, yep. then you get your cookie or cake, huh? On Sunday, they have church. Do you go to church? On Sunday, here, huh? That's good. And you live in the neighborhood, don't you? That's great. Well, thanks for visiting with us. You're welcome. You have a good summer, okay? You too. <laughs> Well, Terry, you've served on this board for almost two years yes. to, since the library got started. And Pretty what, much. What, what appealed to you about getting involved in a community library, especially one that um, wasn't even in existence <laughs> yet? You know? Well, 
I've been really impressed with the, the volunteer effort. The, the people from the church who started this have been so dedicated. But I really, um, really believe strongly in the value of reading, value of education, and, and wanted to see that opportunity for the kids in this neighborhood mm -hmm. who can't easily get to another library. Mm -hmm. And this one has turned into, I, I know it's mentioned before, more of a community center. And so that's, you know, I, I, I think that's a really important thing yeah. for this area. Kids really do use it too. Don't oh, they? yeah. Yeah. I can't believe the, the number of kids that come in now. When we started and we were afraid, oh, you know, they're just going to be a few. And, and yeah. they, they're, got a lot of kids come through yeah, here each yeah. month. Well, right now, as we sit here today, it's a Thursday afternoon, and it's a beautiful afternoon, so mm -hmm. most of the kids are outside, right, and yeah. there's not a lot of them in here, but yeah. I'll bet you there are times during the summer when this place is really busy. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. I, um, I don't do a lot of the volunteering in, in the library itself. I do a lot of work outside, but... Um, yeah, I'm really impressed with how many yeah. kids come through here. You, 30, you do 40 a lot time. of part of you're, you're on an outreach committee, right? Right. right. So, are you surprised to, when you go around and you find out that people don't know this place exists? I am. I we've tried to reach out to a lot of the the local North End businesses, and some of them. You know, it's like, oh, you know, somebody coming, wanting something again. But mm -hmm. a lot of people are, are real, have been very generous with us, and but very interested in it, too. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and, and um, I had contacted the, the people who own the McDonald's franchise in Springfield for a recent fundraiser and spoke to the man for quite a while, was very interested in finding mm -hmm. out, you know, what, what exactly we were doing. And... So of course I sent a thank you note with a brochure mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> to give them more information. Well, you know, so. it's 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 in every neighborhood uh, struggles with okay, what are the kids going to do after school and in the summertime right. when they've got right. all this time on their hands? Right. And and in this area, sadly, a lot of the kids after school, uh, some of them don't have anywhere to go do their homework, or they right. don't have a quiet right. place to go, or they don't have a place where anybody can help them. Right. And and they and they get that here, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. They do. I was raised on the west side of Springfield, and actually my great aunt was the head librarian at West Branch Library. And so we were there all the time. You know, that's where we did, uh, you know, back in those days when you looked at encyclopedias and things yeah, like right. that. Yeah, right, there were no computers, right? <laughs> right, yeah. right, but, uh, look but it yeah. Look it up, kid, look it up. <laughs> so it's, it's really, I think, such a good resource. And, and I know Rachel has mentioned that a lot of these kids don't have computers at home, and, and so much of what they do is mm -hmm. on computers at, work, at school. So mm -hmm. it's it's a good opportunity for them. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's it's 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 difficult. Now it's a beautiful facility, uh, but it's difficult to get the word out that that a facility like this exists, right. except in the neighborhood where it exists. Right. You know? um, and of course, when I I didn't know anything about it, and when somebody mm -hmm. told me that there was a community library that was started with all private funding, mm -hmm. it wasn't a, and no government funds involved. No. In it. Mm -hmm. I was I was surprised that anybody would even undertake it. I. And that's, that's going back to what I said earlier. That's why I'm so impressed with the the people who. I don't credit myself as being here from the very beginning. I came in actually just a few months after it started. But the people, the church people who started this, have just worked tirelessly, mm -hmm. and I'm so impressed with what they have done with this because. When I first came in, this was pretty much just an empty room, yeah. you know, yeah. and and people have been very generous. Um, Benedictine donated a lot of the shelving and, you know, a lot of the books have come from other libraries mm -hmm. and, you know, we've sat and gone through boxes and boxes of books and, but um, it's it's always a challenge to keep getting the word out sure. and, sure. and, and, and then there's kind of that balance too because there are a lot of kids here we need more volunteers to be with the kids so you know we don't want to go out and beat the drums for more kids to come not that we would turn any kids away but don't want we don't really need to 
You have all you can handle. You have all we can handle. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And if more come, you'll handle. Oh yeah, yeah. But I know what you mean. I mean, your your volunteer is is stretched. Your volunteers are stretched. Right, right. Yeah. Well, maybe some will see it on this program. That's one thing we're we're hoping. Yeah, and and that's one thing with with each kind of fundraiser we do. We always we always have an information table or put information out to try to to -hmm. attract more volunteers. So. Well, thank you, Terry. Thank you. The Northside Community Children's Library has summer hours on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 1 to 4. And during the school year, they're open on Tuesdays and Thursdays after school from 3 to 6. With another Illinois Story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.